encounter all of you. I want to thank you so much for inviting me to talk today. The question that I will, would like you to think about today is, how do you, you see me? That might be a hard question, since it's a little hard to see me with a mask on. But I'm trying to do the best. Most people see me, me first as a person with Down syndrome. Um, it makes sense. I mean, me. It's pretty obvious, right? People with Down syndrome use, are usually easy to recognize. But we definitely don't look all the same. This is a cast of the reality show Born This Way. It's a really good show if you haven't seen it. You really should. Down syndrome means I have an extra chromosome. Every cell in my body has 47 chromosomes instead of 46. Down syndrome is a physical and cognitive disability. It mostly affects my muscles and my memory. I can also have a hard time understanding abstract things, like money and time. But I'm working on that. Next slide, please. Sometimes people will wonder what it's like having a disability. But my life is pretty much like most high school school students. I just been front at 451 for English. It was interesting, but pretty dark. I will not read it again. <laughs> Outside school, I play soccer and baseball. I love to draw and paint, watch movies, read books, and have dinner with my family and friends. I'm also a self advocate. I'm interested in getting civil rights for people with disabilities. There are a lot of myths and stereotypes about Down syndrome um, that affect me personally. Some people think that people with Down syndrome are always happy. People think we can't, can't read or talk. Some people think we are dangerous, which we are not. It is really annoying when people treat me like I'm a, a little kid. I hope to, to show you today that how other people see me really affects me. Some of what I will share is very upsetting. Because people with Down syndrome have been seen as poorly in, in the past. I got an idea for the title of this talk when I saw this video made by Core Dam, an Italian Down syndrome nonprofit. Anna Rose is a 19-year-old student with Down syndrome. When, on the day of her birthday, she was the victim of discrimination by a movie theater manager, the story became public. It's really unfriendly. Yeah. She has no way. So, for World Down Syndrome Day, Cordown reached out to Anna Rose, and together they launched the campaign, How Do You See Me?, to challenge the way we see people with Down Syndrome. In the film, Anna Rose is the narrator, and she's portrayed by actress Olivia Wilde. I say myself as a child, and I say John, a sister, and a best friend. As a person, you can't rely on. I see myself following my dreams, even if they are impossible, especially because they're impossible. I see myself as an ordinary person with an important, meaningful, beautiful life. This is how I see myself. How do you see me? The hashtag worked as a call to action, which started a conversation gaining more than 21 million impressions on Twitter. The discussion spread to the media, 
that you're made is called How Do You See Me? It's a great conversation starter. So just accepting people for who they are. Not focusing on society's preconceptions. Many created their own version of the film. Thanks to the campaign, Anna Rose was invited to the UN, where she brought her message to the world. Make sure everyone is included from now on, because inclusion is best for everyone. Society often sees people with Down syndrome as incapable, not smart, and not as actual people. This has terrible consequences. So how do you see people with disabilities? If you have friends or family who are disabled, your answer is often different than if you don't. Many people are uncomfortable or are afraid of disability, but I promise we aren't scary people. This makes sense when you think about, about how the media shows disability. Take a second to think about a villain from the movies. Next slide, please. Very often, villains have a disability or disfigurement. A lot of bad guys from kids, shows, and movies have facial scars or are different than looking in some way. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, this is the first time they see disability. When people think that difference is lesser or evil, it, it affects how we are treated. Next slide, please. In 1866, Dr. Langdon Down identified trisomy 21. But since there is no cure, it became a problem to solve. One way the society has done this is through eugenics. Next slide, please. Eugenics is when people use Darwin's ideas to improve people's eugenics by selecting which characteristics get passed down to the next generation. Next slide, please. In the, the early 1900s, California was one of the centers of eugenics. In 1909, California started allowing forced sterilizations of people with mental illnesses and disabilities. Next slide, please. Many thousands of them, and people of color in prisons, and had these surgeries, forced sterilizations, in the end until 2014. It is still legal in California and 30 other states. Next slide, please. In, in the 1920s and 30s, people with Down syndrome were not allowed to get married and had to live in institutions away from their families. Most people with mental illnesses were also sent to these asylums. Next slide, please. In Germany in the 1930s, Hitler and the Nazis borrowed these ideas about eugenics for a program called Action T4. Before the Holocaust in 1939, the Nazis targeted young children with Down syndrome and other disabilities and took them from their homes. Later that year, the Nazis started a burning of everyone with disabilities. It was too slow to kill them by injection or starvation. So the Nazis developed the gas tears to kill disabled people. More efficiently, they later used these gas tears on, the, on Jewish, gay, and Roma people. Next slide, please. By the end of World War II, between 200 and 300,000 people with disabilities were killed. Half of them were children. That was so terrible, but if you had Down syndrome, things were also really bad in the United States. All the way to the 1980s, 
Next slide, please. When a baby with Down syndrome was born, parents were told that he would probably never walk, talk, or talk. So it would be better to send a baby to an institution. Most people with Down syndrome born before the 1980s still live in crowded asylums. The children live in horrible conditions. A lot of the people didn't even have enough clothes or enough food to eat. Next slide, please. One of the worst institutions was called Willowbrook in New York in 1972. Her daughter Rivera reported on how horrible it was. Even so, it didn't close until 1987, 15 years later. This is Pen... Next slide, please. This is Penhurst, an asylum in Pennsylvania. Children with Down syndrome and other birth disabilities were used in experiments by doctors learning how to make the flu, oop, and hepatitis vaccines. It also closed 35 years ago, in 1987. Instead of becoming a memorial to all the people who were abused and died there, it became an amusement park haunted house. Today, others pretend to be the spirits of the disabled people who live there. Next slide, please. So, other person with Down syndrome, and I ask, how do you see me? It really matters. If you see people like me as useless or less than human, horrible things could happen. Next slide, please. Most people think of the disabilities as a medical issue. According to the medical model of disability, I'm not normal. I'm a problem that needs solving. Next slide, please. In 1959, Lejeune discovered that Down syndrome is caused by an extra chromosome 21. But there is no cure, so doctors can't fix it. Next slide, please. Up until the 1984, doctors in the United States refused to save the lives of people with Down syndrome who need medical treatment, such as heart surgery. Up to the late 1980s, some doctors would even starve the babies with Down syndrome to death. Eventually, all 50 states made this against the law. Today, most parents decide to end the pregnancy if they find out their baby has Down syndrome. I think people should get to choose what's right for their family. But they should also have accurate information and not be judging one of myths and stereotypes. Next slide, please. I feel lucky that I was born in 2004. I get to go to school. I had therapy when I was little. So I can ride, walk, run, and ride my bike. I have amazing parents and teachers who don't believe in the stereotypes. Even so, some things still make life harder for people with Down syndrome. They still can't always get medical treatments. You are victims of police brutality. Half of people killed by the police have disabilities. They still aren't always included in schools. Many businesses won't give us, give us jobs. And it's much, much harder for people of color. 
and the Mongol not to have the money really need to pay for therapy or education. The medical model of disability says that it is that uh, of disability is, is, is the most common way of thinking in our society. But what if you don't see me as vulnerable that needs to fix it? Next slide, please. In the 1970s and 80s, disability rights activists started, started to fight. Ed Roberts is one of the founding fathers of the movement. He is one of my heroes. He had polio as a teenager and ended up in a, a wheelchair. He was from right here in Burlingame and fought to get UC Berkeley. Disability rights activists promoted the, the social model of disability. Next slide, please. The social model says a disability is a failure of society to make things inclusive and accessible for everyone. The disabled person is not a, a problem. The barriers in society are. Next slide, please. Sometimes barriers are physical, like stairs instead of ramps. Or sometimes it's schools not allowing people but not them to join regular classes. Removing these barriers for some people actually helps everyone. For example, ramps are great for strollers as well as wheelchairs. Next slide, please. Because of the work of the disability rights activists, the Americans with Disabilities Act passed in 1990. ADA prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities. Next slide, please. Before ADA, people with disabilities often couldn't go out in public to go to school or work or even out to eat. Because of ADA the, and other the laws, now people with disabilities go to school and have their access to health care and community programs. Next slide, please. People with Down syndrome are living, are healthier and living longer. Some are attending college programs and living independently. Down syndrome didn't change. How people see us did. Next slide, please. Unfortunately, though, the medical model is still the main way society sees disability. The medical model hurts people with disabilities because it says we aren't normal. This is ableism. Ableism sees disabled people as, as not as good as able-bodied people. It is so common that, that it's sometimes it's hard to recognize. Using disability as a metaphor for evil and villains is a fine example that many people never think about. Next slide, please. Here are some examples of ableism. Many books, movies, and TV shows are ableist. A lot of our language is too. The artwork is just as bad as the animal, so please never forsake or tolerate it. Next slide, please. The good news is that there are a lot happening right now with disability rights. Activists are working hard to change the system. This is the disability pride flag. The black field represents the suffering of the disability community from illness, negligence, police brutality, suicide, 
and eugenics. This also represents rebellion and protest. Because we are fighting back. The right in bold well, shape represents the zigzagging that people with disabilities do to navigate an inaccessible world. The, the colors represent five different types of disabilities. Blue stands for mental illnesses. Yellow is for cognitive disabilities like myself. White represents invisible and undiagnosed. Red is for physical disabilities. And green stands for sensory dis disabilities. Just by listening to this presentation, you know more than most people of, about autism and ableism. It is often harder for people with disabilities to communicate and share our war message. We are counting on our allies. Next slide, please. We need laws that help people with disabilities. These are photos of my trips to Washington, D.C. to meet with members members of Congress. We are trying to change a law that allows companies to pay people with disabilities a few pennies an, an hour. There are still there are still many unfair laws, but all we to see is working. Earlier this year. Governor Newsom announced that California will pay reparations to people who got forced sterilizations. Next slide, please. You can be an ally. Start by recognizing ableism. Teach others about what you learned. Follow and boost content from creators with disabilities on social media. You can, can learn so much from this very TikTok and YouTube. Next slide, please. Here are some positive examples of disability in the media. You can probably tell that I really love animation. <laughs> Next slide, please. You can also help us celebrate. For all kinds of human day is March 21st. From 2021. And July is Disability Pride Month. We, we have a long way to go, but things are starting to change. Next slide, please. So, how do you see me? If you see me as a person who needs extra help and to support, and it's okay, and you need help too. I'm really sad about a lot of things, but it's not so bad. You, you can get, get, get used to it. <laughs> you can all support each other and not be feel sad about the things you aren't able to do. You don't have to be, be perfect. Having that soon is not bad. I still want to come and to you. Because I feel different, then I don't want to be exactly like typical people. It makes me unique. I love who I am, I don't want to change in any way. Next slide, please. Other people with Down syndrome feel the same. These statistics are from a 2011 study of hundreds of people. We don't suffer from Down syndrome. So, so people should feel sorry for, for us. Next slide, please. How do I see myself? As a confident, as a confident young man, as a support and storyteller, as someone who is worth listening to, as someone who is tired of being on, on the sidelines, as someone with deep emotions, as a loyal and kind friend, on the film leader and civil home rights activist, as someone who wants to let people 
He's going to go through my eyes. And the person in big dreams that I'm working hard to make sure. How do you see me? Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.